Lucy's. Welcome to this Q&A. Rich. Say hi, Lucy. Hey there. Hello. This is going to be a little bit different to usual. Lucy's going to ask me several questions Quick on fire. Tuesday on Instagram. Boom, boom, boom. I'll let you blow up my... There was so many comments. Like so many comments. I'm going to like slam through these. Lucy is going to like punch them in the face. She's going to quick fire, yeah. She's going to shoot out these questions at me. I'm going to answer as quick and like honestly as humanely possible. So here we go. Speed round. Lucy, go. When was your first girlfriend? How old were you? Slash crush. Oh. How are you doing? I'm in my 40s, yeah. I had a romantic relationship with a Barbie doll at one point when I was like eight. <laughs> the girls are like, yeah. So my first thing I fell in love with was a Barbie doll. The most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. I liked Ken, so that's fair enough. Yeah, good stuff. Well, my first ever girlfriend, I was probably about 12, and it was really awkward, and we never even held hands. Yeah, it's badass. Favourite song to cover and why? Ooh, favourite song to cover. I love playing stuff like Pierce the Veil. I like playing songs that have kind of screaming vocals in them and putting, like, a singing touch on them. So, Pierce the Veil, probably one of my favourite ones. If you could meet anyone in the world, who would it be and why? And what would you do with them? Jed would, and I would slam their heads together and drink their blood. That's intense. That's intense. <laughs> favourite thing to do in the summer holidays? Oh, favourite thing to do. Well, we're kayakers. We own our own kayaks. We live five minutes from the beach where we were born. So, kayaking. She wasn't born, she was born in London, but kayaking. Yeah, probably to do stuff like water sports, all that shizzle. So many people have asked this, are you an Arsenal fan? <laughs> Please don't hate me for saying that yes, I am an Arsenal fan, because I am an Arsenal fan. Support them because of my granddad growing up, who's now passed away. That's what my tattoos are about, my, my grandparents passing away. But yeah, I'm a Gunner fan. Yeah, Gunners, yeah! I love football, just in general. I watch everything, and I, I love every team. Except for Spurs. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm <laughs> Fuck you, Spurs. Which is your favourite school? Uh, and Kel said, cough, cough. To be cough, cough. <sighs> asking to pick a favourite freaking school so hard. is like asking to pick a favourite fan. We remember like something about each school pretty much. There's something that stands out. And there's a lot of schools that you remember but then you can't remember the name. Like I remember the room we were in, the people we were playing to, the real, the really good like environments but I can't fully remember. Or even like and that school that does the really good smoothies. <sighs> oh. yeah. See there's something good about everyone and some schools that serve Costa. I'm even on my coffee right now. What has been your most memorable moment experience? If you've never been there, last time we went to Vegas, right, we flew in a helicopter and we were going over the, the Grand Canyon. We did this private little tour thing. I remember turning to Lucy, who's been there before, and I was there like, this is not what I expected. I looked below me and there was just nothing. It was just like the ground was like, you know, it wasn't even that far below us. And like, this is not, this is not a Grand Canyon. This is like a, a semi canyon, right? And then all of a sudden I'm looking down and then the ground just drops away, falls away. A lot of people go, oh, why didn't you talk about musicians you've worked with and stuff? Isn't that your favourite thing? No, I, th I feel like when I flew over the Grand Canyon for the first time and I saw it drop, I've never felt anything like that. It was a glass floor as well. I know this sounds very s strange to say, but my bum hole tingled. Moving on. <laughs> uh, oh. Favourite things to do when you're not singing? Oh, when I'm not singing. When is he not uh, singing? Uh, I always sing. I really annoy everyone. Anything Xbox related, love. Gaming related in general. Big Steam gamer. Watch a fair bit of YouTube. Don't pack up far too many pack openings. They get boring now though. I have to admit, like every single YouTuber that plays FIFA seems to do the same freaking thing. Anyone else notice that? And I feel like the reactions are so fake now as well. The more, you, you, you only listen to me, like, watching them, and you must sit there and be like, which one is he watching? Because they all sound the freaking same. I still can't not watch them, I don't get it. What, what do I actually do? <laughs> I don't know. You don't do a lot. I collect Lego. <laughs> yeah, you like your Lego. I build Lego lingerie and I wear it and I walk around the house like... <laughs> That would be so uncomfortable. Yeah. Favourite band and singer at the moment? Me? Yeah, me. Moving on. <laughs> Is there anyone who inspired you to sing? By the way, Arsenal. Jack Black. Jack Black, School of Rock. I didn't even like music growing up. I saw that film, boom. Give me a guitar jumped straight in. Jack Black is the ultimate legend. Have you ever danced in the rain? <laughs> oh yeah! Ah! Who inspired you to create your mu own music? A guitar teacher called John, John Lee, he's in a local band. He just told me I could sing. First person to believe in me, and then I started just songwriting. And I went from there. If you could be any other YouTuber, who would you be? <sighs> 
This is a really tough question. This one that she watches, Fun for Louis, he just travels all the time. He seems like a bit of a legend. He has dreads. Maybe it's because I miss Sweeney who has dreads. <laughs> but Fun for Louis, definitely. And I feel like people like Chris MD, Mini Minter, you know, you get people like KSI, they literally do what I want to do so bad, which is just take a day off and go and film stuff playing football down the park and stuff, you know? So little things like that. Where has been your favourite place to visit? Glasgow, Cardiff, Brighton. Boom. Good, mate. I love all of them. I love everywhere we've been. Those three places and Chester. Chester, just because we went to a park with the fattest, fattest oh, squirrels goodness. and pigeons, right? There were pigeons that waddled up this really steep hill. They were so freaking overweight. They were swallowing monkey nuts whole. Good old Chester. How can I help to stand up for people's rights and opinions successfully without killing people's OTP or hurting anyone's feelings? I think mean, this is a really good question actually. I don't know if any of you know but recently we've gone, I'm transitioning into vegetarian, Lucy's gone pretty heavily vegan. The one thing we've noticed that just doesn't help if you preach at people, make suggestions, you know, don't insult the way someone lives their life. We've all grown up in a certain way. You know, the world we live in is set up to run in a certain way. I think when you come to stand up for people's rights, you've got to see every side of a story. You've got to see every single side and go... Every opinion. Yeah, every, everyone has an opinion. And don't just sit there and go, my opinion is the only opinion. Go, I want to help this person. I want to put my opinion across in a way that affects this person I'm trying to help or this group of people I'm trying to help, but also connects with everyone else that maybe doesn't, isn't as well educated as you are on this particular subject. And I don't mean that in a patronising way, as well educated. It's like when I go into school and I talk about cyberbullying, if I went into school and I talked about, I don't know, really old areas of the internet, people would be like, nah mate. Like Bebo. <laughs> yeah, like Bebo. Go in and I talk about stuff that I actually care about, that everyone cares about, YouTube, gaming, boom, 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 vines. Everyone loves it, passionate about it. You've got to get down on their level. Best way to make a difference and to get through to people. Would you rather kill your family pet or never have internet again? It's so hard. I've got two adorable- <laughs> do I've got two adorable Chinese dwarf hamsters, Enzo and Reginald. However, those little punks would be dead right now. I'm sorry, Lucy. <laughs> I put them under my feet and step on them. I could not live without the internet. I'm so sorry. <laughs> what is the meaning of life to you? To me, the meaning of life is in the world we live in, remember that everyone is the same whenever you hear all this rubbish on the news about like different people just because they've got different colour skin to you kind of being that thing that's going to end the world. It's like, no, that's not the point. They're exactly the same as people. And I feel like there's just like interconnectivity. I'm big into stuff like that. I just want people... I'm quite overly sensitive when it comes to... I like to see other people, you know, do well. I don't want to see people like struggle. I cannot stand seeing it you know when you see like someone that's homeless and all that and people just look down on them and you just say like help people yeah just help people what do you think of dimitri payet <laughs> if you're an arsenal fan back at the first game of the season at the emirates west ham beat arsenal 2-0 broke my heart dimitri payet is freaking he's a genius like he's so good he's just so good highest rated west ham player on fifa right and his free kick recently i don't know if anyone saw it you know the other day against crystal palace Oh my god, it gave me like man nipples. What was the worst ever experience on stage ever? In Bristol. <laughs> Everyone knows. If you want to see the video of me falling over in Bristol, we'll right? Link it. Yeah. In Bristol, at the uh, the Fife Hall, but packed, everyone was up being absolutely amazing. But just this one part of the stage, right at the front, it just drops away and it was really dark. There was no lighting around this one little part of the stage, and there was two speakers, one on either side, monitors facing at me. And I, I didn't see one. I went to step and sing to someone. I face planted. I went straight down on the floor. Everyone was like, oh my god, people thought I'd died and I just stood up and was like, that's no, okay guys, I'm fine. I think fails are just hilarious. So naturally I threw it into a video on YouTube and you can go and check that out in the description below. Do you like Highcliffe School? Highcliffe was wicked. That was down in the, um, the Hampshire area. Guys, yes, of course I liked Highcliffe. Have you ever messed up on stage and been really embarrassed? Right, so I'm gonna be honest, but since I've done the solo artist thing, I haven't really messed up in a way that people would know. He doesn't let other people know you when he's messed up. Most of the time you wouldn't know that I messed up. It's just like, you know, too many people when they mess up on stage, they're like, ah! And, and, then everybody know, and then everybody knows about it, they pull faces and stuff. When I was younger, I remember this one time, one song in, I was really lazy, I hadn't bought spare strings, I snapped two of my strings, two songs in. <laughs> so I had to play for an entire 10 songs set after that with four strings. I snapped my D string and my G string, right? So they're <laughs> <laughs> they 
that G-string. Would you rather be a bin man or a poop picker upper? Um, <laughs> Does that actually exist? Do poop pick pick picker upper? Well, you exist? tell me. Like, you quickly go for a poo in a toilet and see if someone walks <laughs> along and picks it up and like maybe maybe they mean a dog poop picker upper. Um, personally. I could not ever be a binman because I wouldn't want to see what people throw away. You kind of like find out that yeah. a lot of people are into really crazy, like even fetishes. People have like some weird... You can tell a lot about someone by the <laughs> contents of their garbage. Yeah, I think I'd rather walk around picking up poop. What made you start vlogging? Uh, I started vlogging because everyone wanted loads of content and it's really difficult when you uh, have to learn loads of new songs all the time and I'm on the road constantly and these new songs I have to listen to till I'm sick to death of them to learn them so they take a couple of days but with a vlog I can just be like la 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 started vlogging just so we can kind of share more with you guys I, I know every YouTuber says it but the point of YouTube is you can connect with your audience and that's what we want you guys to do like we want to feel connected to you, you guys feel connected to us, so that's why we started vlogging. What was the scariest situation you've ever been in? When I was younger, I told Lucy about this earlier, me and my friend Josh, one of my best friends Josh, we used to go and play basketball in this park in Payton in Devon called Victoria Park. I was like 11 and me and Josh went in, I don't know why, at like half nine at night, pitch black, we went to go to the basketball courts because there was a light on it and walking in, this one guy, Josh clocked eyes with him. Oh God, he was so angry. Josh looked at him and he couldn't understand what Josh was saying and Josh couldn't understand what he was saying. So they kept locking eyes and the guy ends up coming up and punching him and then he calls over his brother who was stood over there and he comes up to us and his exact line was, yeah, we'll, we'll let you off this time, but if you're old enough to breathe, then you are young enough to bleed. But if you're old enough to breathe, then you are young enough to bleed. Have you always known that like music's what you wanted to do? Not at all. No way. You ask my mum, before I was 14, I didn't have a clue. She like, was worried. Yeah, she was worried. I'd like done a little bit of like classical guitar before that, but never really like had someone teach me what I wanted. Didn't really like music. I'd written a lot of novels, but then it was learning guitar that made me turn the novel writing into songwriting. You can't be expected to know what you want to do. Like, all you're learning at school is like, oh, you are gonna... They must know what they're doing with their life. <laughs> you guys, if you don't know what you're doing with your life, if you don't have like a six-figure income by next year, give up. <laughs> I'm joking. If you only had 24 hours left, what would you do? I would break everything. I would find the people I hated the most and just do really <laughs> annoying, petty things. Drop kick a baby. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> When are you coming back to Newcastle? Yes, love you, Rach. Right, guys, I believe October half term we're going to be doing a show again in Glasgow and Newcastle. So we're going to be back in Glasgow and Newcastle areas from August onwards. Yeah. And we will be releasing some more music, some more songs, throwing out loads of stuff. So there's lots coming up. There's so loads coming up. Be though. prepared. If you were stranded on an island, what would be your go to things? My guitar, hands down, so I could sing to all of the, the fish. Maybe like a magical potion which I can drop onto the sand which turns the sand into food and Ribena and a rubber duck. What has been your strangest stage experience? I played this, I played at this bar, got this elevated stage on top of beer barrels. And this one quite big fan of mine um, kind of is going mental. I've never seen someone scream this much. Like, ah! like eyeballs bursting out of the head like hanging and Achilles. Then she kind of throws her arms up like, Richard! and she punches the end of my mic stand, it flies up into my eye. I had a bit of a black eye the next day, like full on. Right, I flew back with my guitar on, hit my head on the back wall. Again, there was beer barrels. And I remember just the entire audience going silent. People behind the bar, all the staff went silent, looking up at me on the floor there, like crippled. And then they, I just stood up and I just carried on playing. But I swear I had minor concussion after that. He's also broken someone's nose. Yeah, I had a cheeky hair flick at one point after a gig. <laughs> Not my proudest moment. I was like chatting to a bunch of people and I just kind of flipped my hair like that and I hit them in the face with my... Yeah, I, I broke their nose. They must have a very sensitive bone. <laughs> well, maybe I've just got a really fat head. Would you rather have a head the size of a tennis ball or the size of a watermelon? Let's be honest, watermelons! <laughs> Can you imagine me with a little head like... Would you rather have no elbows or no knees? I'm gonna go for the elbows because I don't like penguins. So if I had like no kneecaps and I had to walk like this, I'd waddle more. Teach me how to dug it. You know why? Cause all the girls love me. Everybody love me. Everybody love me. In which case, I'd 
be more like a penguin. What was the best gig you've done? I've done quite a lot of charity events, like big charity events. I'm just going to answer this with like a more generalised question because a lot of you have been to my gigs and seen they're all, they're all awesome to not try and sound like I'm trying to sound like an angel here with like a halo appearing above my head. I like helping people so I think just any gigs that are for charity or for a good cause are the ones I like the most. They have a good atmosphere. Good atmosphere. It's slugs or worms. They're so slimy. <laughs> eating a worm is bad enough but could you imagine like eating a snail or a slug? I'm sure a lot of you can be like, I did that, I had like an obsession with eating slugs when I was younger. If you were the last person in the world and you could choose one person to be with you, who would it be? Daryl. It'd be Daryl. Sorry, we, we took Lucy away because then it makes me feel like I'm on my own and I'm in the middle of nowhere so I'm the last person person, the person I'd want to spend it with, Daryl from The Walking Dead. Right, can you do a handstand? Yes. Handstand! Ah! <laughs> do you want to come to my house for dinner tonight? I asked my mummy, she said that's fine. <laughs> well, what's for dinner? <laughs> Better be cooking some vegan stuff, baby! But yeah, no, I'd love to. If you could kill any famous person, who would it be? No explanation needed. Jedward. Don't like their hairstyles, man. Would you rather die in a microwave or an oven? I have horror dreams occasionally of, of being put in a giant microwave and just the pressure making When your head, me. like, blow up? Yeah, it'd make you explode, the So, pressure. a microwave? Because an oven, you just burn. Yeah, it's burn. Chicken nuggets dipped in melted chocolate or French fries dipped in milkshake. Fries dipped in milkshake, obviously. Fries dipped in milkshake. So. Cheese with whipped cream or mustard mixed with cucumber. Do you eat these things? No. Do you love or hate Marmite? I like it. I'm not fond of it. Yeah, no, it's all right. Would you rather know when you die or how you die? How? Because uh, knowing when would be creepy as freak. Who is your favourite gamer? Favourite or one I watch the most because I really like Markiplier. But then at the minute I'm watching just copious amounts of the Sidemen. Just too much Sidemen. What is your favourite game on Xbox? Favourite games on Xbox, they have to be Boom, FIFA 16. Boom, Black Ops 3. And Boom at the minute because I'm playing it. Alien Isolation. I've never... Felt like pooing myself this much he in my gets life. So scared. I, I ask Lucy to come and sit with me while I play it sometimes. Such a pussy! If you were a girl, what would you like to be called and why? Jezebel. <laughs> because it makes me sound like I'm Jezzy and Belly. Where do you hope to be in three years? Sitting next to you whilst you watch this minute in this weird as hell. Three years, I want to be settled in my own amazing fabulous place. Bunch of dogs, like a baby pug, baby German shepherd, have a little lamb running Goat. around just chilling. Goat, you know. Would you rather support Spurs or have no hair for the rest of your life? Spurs, I'm coming straight at you. You do not want to see my head bold, right? My forehead is it's like a pink. 12 head. Right? Good land of plane on my forehead. Imagine me with a... I'd look like an egg. Come on, Harry Kane! Do you like going on the school visits you do? And if so, why? I enjoy it mainly because I like helping people making a difference in people's lives. It's getting very tough now because we have to travel so often, do so much, as well as fitting it around other things. But yeah, still love it. We wouldn't, we wouldn't do it if we didn't like it. We wouldn't have met you guys. What was the weirdest, funniest moment you had on a school visit? That guy singing Elvis Presley. Yeah! World school, my Elvis Presley bro, but we had loads like the, the rainbow, guys. the rainbow fabulous guy in Bristol. Yeah. We had the um, guy doing Michael Jackson. Yeah, Michael Jackson in Bristol. Why are they all in this? Why are they all in like, um, the south areas? Brooklyn, the first ever was that the first ever school? Yeah, E and H, Brooklyn, E and H. That was um, he was cool with his little mullet. I like that mullet. Yeah. I remember the mullet. Oh, my favorite Disney movie. It's got to be. I know it sounds such a cliche, but it's gonna be Frozen. It's still so cool. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go, can't hold it back anymore. That is right. basically the song I sing when I really need the toilet because I can't hold it back anymore. Zayn now versus Zayn in One Direction. I, I find Zayn now pretty saucy. <laughs> His left talk. How many schools have you been to? Uh, at least 600. Have you ever broken a bone? If you have, how old were you and what did you do? My shoulder. It was horrible. Cracked my knee as well when I was like eight. Yeah, not nice. Got it by a car. <laughs> At like 50, 60 mile an hour. I can't feel my knee. It feels like just numbness and happiness and goo. If you could choose between singing and YouTube, which one would you choose? Uh, if I'm being honest, it's a little bit less stress being a YouTuber, I feel, than being a singer because a singer, you have to... It's quite strenuous to put so much pressure on your voice all the time. So I think if I could, I'd just be a vlogger full time. Have you ever stalked fan? Yes. You. I know that was you, Chelsea, that asked that, because I saw that. It's you I stalk. No, I'm only joking. If you had to play one video game for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, God, it's such a...
tough question. I love FIFA and I can play it for hours, but I'd get so freaking bored. Oh, Halo I love, but I get bored. See, probably a Lego game. No, I get so bored. Minecraft, I get so bored. All of these games I've got, I would get so bored. I don't know, 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 I don't know what it'd be. It's, it'd have to be FIFA, it's what I play the most at the minute, but I'd just probably throw my Xbox out after, like, yeah. God damn. How much do you love your fans? I don't. I hate the lot of you, I just can leave me alone. You, you know I'm only joking. No. Guys, in all seriousness, obviously, comes without saying, but yeah, I love you a lot. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if it wasn't for you. I wouldn't have the experiences and the opportunities I get without you guys, so thank you so much. All I'm gonna say is I just love doing Q&As because it's so interesting to like kind of hear what you guys want to know about and also just the people out there that just want to have a laugh and uh, troll it away. I love it. It's so much fun. So guys, thank you for the questions. Thank you for the love. Most of all, thank you for being you. Big love. Bye from me and Lucy. Say bye, Lucy. Bye. Virtual hug. Virtual hug and dab and dab.